no fewer than 12 different laptops are launching with the new Snapdragon X series processors from seven different manufacturers, and we're going to cover them all in this video. We'll start with an overview of the key features and what makes each different, their unique value propositions, and you'll want to stay until the end where we'll bring it all together with some ranking lists by feature to help you make an informed decision, and a value comparison to determine which one is the best bang for the buck. The reason Apple's laptops are so good these days is because they switched to Apple Silicon, which is based on the ARM architecture, letting them have crazy power efficiency compared to Intel chips. That means less heat and noise, longer battery life, and also the ability to tap into the full power of what you paid for while on battery and not just while plugged in like many Windows laptops. This is finally changing with the launch of laptops powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon X, or is it 10, plus an Elite chips, also based on ARM. It's not the first ARM chip for Windows, but this time the power and performance per watt is comparable to Apple Silicon. I won't dive more into the chip details other than to know that there is one Snapdragon X Plus chip and three X Elite chip versions, including the low tier 78 model, the mid tier 80, and the higher tier 84. That's important because the laptops we'll cover today could have one or more of these chip variations. All right, let's get started in alphabetical order. First up is the Acer Swift 14 AI, boasting a 14.5 inch 16 by 10 aspect ratio IPS display with 2560 by 1600 resolution and 120 hertz refresh rates. But the touchscreen is optional. It also has a 1440p webcam, a rather large 75 watt hour battery with battery life claimed at 26 hours. Acer says it weighs about three pounds. The Acer Swift has an okay port selection with two USB-C, two USB-A, and a headphone jack. Pricing starts at $1,100, likely for the X Plus CPU, but detailed specs are hard to find, so it's unclear how much memory and storage you get at that price, though it can be configured up to 32GB of RAM and 1TB of storage. Next in line is the Asus VivoBook S15, the largest laptop on this list with a 15.6 inch OLED display at 2880 by 1620 resolution and 120 hertz refresh rates, but no mention of a touchscreen. The battery is 70 watts, but the claimed battery life is on the lower side at 18 hours. However, the laptop has a pretty good weight for its size at 3.13 pounds. Rounding out the Asus VivoBook are a plethora of ports, including two USB-A, two USB-C, an HDMI 2.1 port, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and a micro SD card reader. The price starts at $1,300, but that gets you the low tier X Elite processor as there's no plus CPU option. This base model also comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM like most others, but one terabyte of storage, which is on the higher side for a starting config. The next few laptops all come from Dell, covering their XPS, Inspiron, and Latitude lines. The XPS 13 that has the Snapdragon processor only comes in one configuration on Dell's website, with a 13.4 inch, 1920 by 1200, 120 hertz non-touch screen. However, you can pre-order the OLED touchscreen version with a much higher 2880 by 1800 resolution on other sites like Best Buy, so they'll probably come to Dell's website eventually. The XPS 13 weighs 2.62 pounds, has a 55 watt hour battery with up to 27 hours of battery life claimed. Expansion is the weak point with only two USB-C ports. The $1300 configuration gives you the mid-tier X Elite processor, 16 gigabytes of memory, and 512 gigabytes of storage. The OLED touchscreen version listed on Best Buy is $1,500, so it costs $200 for the OLED upgrade, which seems well worth it. The Inspiron 14 Plus features a 14 inch 2560 by 1660 by 10 aspect ratio IPS display at only 60 Hertz, though with a touchscreen. It's a bit on the heavy side at 3.21 pounds, though the battery is slightly smaller at 54 watt hours or 21 claimed hours. Expansion is more impressive. In addition to the two USB-C ports, there's also a USB-A port, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, a micro SD card reader, and the M.2 SSD slot means storage is upgradable. The only configuration for the Inspiron 14 Plus is $1,100, and it comes with the Snapdragon X Plus processor with no option to upgrade to Elite. 16 gigabytes of memory and 512 gigabytes of storage round out this machine. Dell's Latitude 7455 and 5455 are coming later this year, so there are few concrete details currently about pricing. However, it's reported that the Latitude 7455 will have a 14-inch IPS touchscreen with QHD Plus resolution in a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. The weight is still a bit high at 3.17 pounds and will have a similar 54 watt hour battery like the Inspiron 14 Plus. Port selection is also similar to the Inspiron 14 Plus with two USB-C, one USB-A, a 3.5 mm audio jack, and a micro SD card reader. 
It also has the replaceable M.2 SSD slot, but an extra is that it comes with the option of a SIM card. You may have a choice in processor between the Snapdragon X Plus or the mid-tier X Elite, along with up to 32GB of memory and 1TB of storage. HP has a few offerings as well, starting with the HP Omnibook X AIPC, which features a 14-inch 2240x1400 IPS screen with touch, which is a lower resolution than most other 14-inch models. The weight is 2.97 pounds, and it has a 59 watt hour battery advertised as 26 hours of battery life. Expansion is not quite as good as the Dell's, with two USB-C, one USB-A, and a headphone jack, but no SD card reader. The price starts at $1,150 for the silver color, or $1,160 for white. And you get the low-tier X Elite processor, along with 16GB of memory and 512GB of storage. While you can upgrade to 32GB of memory, 1TB of storage, and Windows 11 Pro as well, HP also offers a $1,200 model with 1TB of storage included and no cost difference for the white color, so it appears to be $50 cheaper if all you needed is the extra storage. HP also offers a more expensive laptop in the HP EliteBook Ultra G1Q. Other than a midnight color scheme that improves durability with a smudge-resistant coating and a 3-year warranty, it is a very similar specs to the Omnibook. It's got the same 14-inch 2240x1400 IPS screen, but touch functionality seems omitted. Is the same weight at 2.97 pounds, the same 59 watt hours of battery, and the same set of ports. Even though it costs $1,700, you get the same low tier X Elite processor and can't customize it beyond the standard 16GB of memory and 512GB of storage. The only reason to pick up an Elite Book Ultra over the Omnibook is if you're a business doing corporate purchasing and pricing. Okay, we're just over halfway through the list now. If you've been finding this video helpful, please hit that like button to let me know. I appreciate it. All right, let's get back to the list. Lenovo has a rather unique offering with the Yoga Slim 7X, which has a 14.5 inch OLED touch display at 2944 by 1840 resolution, one of the highest on this list. Unfortunately, it only goes up to 90 Hertz and not 120 Hertz though. At 2.82 pounds, it's also really lightweight, but features a pretty large 70 watt hour battery that can last for almost 22 hours. The port arrangement is unlike other laptops. It's got three USB-C ports, a power button on the side, and also a webcam privacy e-shutter switch. The Slim 7X starts at $1,290, which gets you the low-tier X Elite processor, 16GB of memory, and 1TB of storage. Lenovo also has a more expensive business-focused offering in the ThinkPad T14s Gen 6, which features three 14-inch display options ranging from IPS screens with 1920 by 1200 resolution and 60Hz refresh rates with or without touch support, to an OLED 2880 by 1800 screen with 120 hertz refresh rates, but without touch. The ThinkPad is still lightweight, starting at 2.72 pounds, but although the battery is smaller at 58 watt hours, it claims more battery life at up to nearly 30 or 26 hours, depending on configuration. Expansion is a bit unique, with two Thunderbolt 4 ports, two USB-A, and HDMI that is probably not 2.1, since it only supports up to 4K at 60 hertz, a 3.5mm audio jack, a Kensington Nano security slot, and even an optional Nano SIM card slot. Prices for the ThinkPad T14s Gen 6 are kind of ridiculous though, topping this list at a whopping $2700 just to start. For that, you'll still get the low tier X Elite processor, 32GB of memory, and 1TB of storage, along with the lower resolution IPS screen. No upgrade options exist just yet, but expect to pay upwards of $3000 or more for the OLED screen version. I'd suggest avoiding the ThinkPad as an option unless money is literally no object. The only non-laptop on this list comes directly from Microsoft in the Surface Pro 11th edition, which sounds slightly cooler than just the Surface Pro 11. Like the previous Surface Pros, it can serve as a tablet or a laptop with an additional keyboard accessory. The Surface Pro 11 has a 13-inch 2880x1920 touchscreen with 120Hz refresh rates and a unique 3x2 aspect ratio that gives more vertical real estate. The screen comes in either IPS or OLED flavors as well. The tablet is only 1.97 pounds, but don't forget that attaching the new Surface Pro Flex keyboard adds on another 0.75 pounds, making a total of 2.72 pounds, in line with the lighter 14-inch laptops on this list. Microsoft doesn't list the battery size, though it's reportedly 48 or 53 watt hours. But oddly enough, estimated battery life is only 14 hours, which is much lower than most on this list, and also lower than the Surface Pro 10's 19 hours with Intel processor. What's the deal? I thought the Snapdragon was supposed to be more efficient. 
Expansion is somewhat limited with only two USB-C ports, but they have DisplayPort 2.1 support. There's also the Surface Connect charging port and the keyboard attachment port along with a 5G nano SIM option coming in fall of 2024. Price is good and bad with a low starting price of $1,000, but that gets you the X Plus processor and IPS display along with 16 gigabytes of RAM and only 256 gigabytes of storage, the lowest on this list. You'll have to shell out at least $1,500 if you want the X Elite processor, I'm not sure which version, and the OLED display, but doing so also upgrades the storage to 512 gigabytes. That means it's not as expensive an upgrade for OLED as it first appears. However, keep in mind that you'll need to pay between $180 for a Surface Pro keyboard to a whopping $450 for the Surface Pro Flex keyboard with slim pin. So the full cost of a Surface Pro 11 as a laptop isn't that cheap either. Luckily, those looking for a more traditional laptop from Microsoft can choose the Surface Laptop 7th edition, which comes in two sizes, with a 13.8 inch 2304 by 1536 resolution display or a 15 inch 2496 by 1664 display. Both support 120 Hz refresh rates, multi-touch, and are the signature 3 by 2 aspect ratio. The 13.8 inch laptop comes in at 2.96 pounds, while the 15 inch is 24% heavier at 3.67 pounds. The 13.8 inch model reportedly has a 54 watt hour battery with a claimed life of 20 hours, compared to the 15 inch model's 66 watt hour battery and 22 hours runtime, both of which are significantly longer than the Surface Pro 11's 14 hours. Ports are also improved with two USB C ports, one USB A, a 3.5 mm headphone jack, and the Surface Connect port for charging. Like the Surface Pro, the Surface Laptop 7 starting price is also just $1,000 for the 13.8 inch size with X Plus processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and 256 gigabytes of storage. Upgrading to the X Elite raises the price by $400, but you actually get 512 gigabytes of storage as well, which is $200 separately. So the actual cost of the X Elite processor upgrade is $200. The cheapest Surface Laptop 7 with an Xlite processor is actually the 15-inch model that starts at $1,300. There's no plus processor option for the 15-inch size, so the cost of the larger display and battery is really $100, which isn't too bad. The final contender on our list is the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge, which comes in two screen sizes, 14 inches or 16 inches. Both sizes seem to have the same 2880 by 1800 resolution AMOLED display that supports 120Hz refresh rates and touch. The 14-inch model is only 2.6 pounds, while the 16-inch is 3.4 pounds. The battery is reportedly 55.9 watt-hours in the 14-inch and 61.8 watt-hours in the 16-inch. Samsung claims up to 22 hours of battery life. They are also proud of the ports, with two USB-C, one USB-A, a port they claim is HDMI 2.1, but also only supports 4K 60Hz, so it's not HDMI 2.1, a headphone jack, and a micro SD card reader. The Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge starts at $1,350 for the 14-inch model and mid-tier Snapdragon X Elite processor with 16GB of RAM and 512GB of storage. An extra $100 gets you the larger 16-inch model, while an extra $400 lets you upgrade to both the 16-inch size and the high-tier X Elite processor, the only offering on this list that lets you do so. That means the processor upgrade is really $300, but it's not likely to be a good value. What might be a good value is if you pre-order the Galaxy Book 4 Edge, Samsung will give you a 55-inch 4K TV, supposedly worth $380 for free. Phew, that was a long list. Now let's rank these laptops by some key features and then do an overall value comparison. If you're looking for the most portable and lightest laptops, you'll want to check out the 14-inch Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge, which is even lighter than the 13.4-inch Dell XPS 13 in second place. You can also consider Lenovo's offerings and the Microsoft Surface Pro 11 if you prefer the flexibility of a tablet. If you're looking for the best expansion ports, check out the Asus VivoBook, Dell's Inspiron and Latitude options, and Samsung's Galaxy Book. Avoid the Dell XPS 13 and the Surface Pro 11. If you're looking for the largest screens, then the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge 16-inch leads the pack, followed by the Asus VivoBook S15 at 15.6 inches and the Microsoft Surface Laptop 7 15-inch model. The Surface Pro 11 is the smallest of the bunch by far at only 13 inches. If you love OLED screens as much as I do, then the least expensive choice is the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7X, but at only 90Hz refresh rates instead of 120 like the rest. The cheapest 120Hz OLED is the Asus VivoBook S15 at $1300, but it doesn't have a touchscreen. The next best value is the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge with an AMOLED 120Hz screen at $1350. 
And finally, if you really want a touchscreen, then you'll need to eliminate the Asus VivoBook S15, non-OLED Dow XPS 13, the HP EliteBook Ultra, and the Lenovo ThinkPad T14s OLED version. If you're on a budget, the least expensive starting price is put the Surface Laptop 7 on top, but storage is limited to 256 gigabytes, while the Surface Pro 11 may seem to also start at $1,000, paying extra for the keyboard means it's actually more expensive than most others on this list. If we equalize the specs to the Snapdragon X Plus processor, 16GB of memory, and 512GB of storage, the cheapest X Plus machines are the Acer Swift 14 AI and Dell Inspiron 14 Plus. For most people, the 120Hz refresh rate and larger 14.5-inch display of the Acer is preferable. Next, if we treat the low- and mid-tier Snapdragon X Elite processors the same and equalize on 16GB of memory and 512GB of storage, the cheapest X Elite you can get is the HP Omnibook X14 at only $1,150, while everyone else basically starts around $1,300. So after all this, if I were to buy a Snapdragon X series laptop, which one would I choose? I'm actually leaning toward the 15-inch Surface Laptop 7 for its large 3x2 aspect ratio screen and pure Microsoft software and build quality, though it is on the heavier side. It doesn't have OLED, which is a bummer, though the HDR screen should still be pretty decent. If I really can't resist the OLED itch, then the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7X or the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge would likely be my choice. But let me know which of these you're planning on getting, and if I missed anything important. Also, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more tech comparisons. You can also check out this video here.